than 9,000 12 to 15 year olds applied to help in a nationwide search by BBC Talent. They're fighting for just eight places on an extreme expedition to the Canadian Arctic. They'll help polar bears by doing major research into climate change. Deciding which young adventurers have what it takes, former army officer and expedition leader Ben Major. Completing the judging team, assistant leader Emma Jay and series producer Marshall Corwin. Why should we put you to go to the Arctic? Um, I'd be helping the polar bears, which should make me feel really proud. It's a new challenge for me. I've never done anything as big as this. I suppose I want to save the world, really. I want to... <laughs> what for you would be the hardest thing about being in the Arctic? Being afraid of being eaten alive by a polar bear, probably. <laughs> I'm not really sure about going to the toilet, isn't that what it's called? Are we going to the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> After much debate, the hopefuls are narrowed down to just 16 finalists. Now they face a challenging weekend in the freezing cold up in the highlands of Scotland. 6am on the first morning and Ben and Emma surprise them with a rude morning, awakening. Morning, morning, How are you all? You all right? Well, we've got 10 minutes. Let's do it, OK? Faster, faster, keep moving. It's minus seven degrees, so what better way to start the day than a workout in the snow? Face in the snow. Who's uh -oh. got cold hands? Me. Right. Come on, come on. Yeah, how are you feeling now? The dizziness gone. The early morning shock to the system has already hit Lily. I just felt really dizzy all of a sudden. It's all right now. The freezing temperatures are getting to others too. Lewis's hands are in excruciating pain. Let's get worse. Move, 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 move. Oh. Just keep them down, keep them down, keep the blood flowing into them, all right? Don't cook them up. Just keep them down, all right? They're so cold, they're like, they're numbing, they're just stinging. But conditions are positively mild compared to the Arctic. Things are about to get a whole lot tougher. A 10 metre stretch of frozen lake confronts the finalists. What do you think we're doing now? Monkey He's earning it. As you can see from the ice on the top, quite cold. Oh my God, I knew it. Oh. One by one, they take the plunge, quite literally. Oh. Dramatic fall. That's what I'm going to get. That's a good one, Corwin. Nice one. Nice one. Cool, cool, cool. It's so cold. <laughs> And that was pure evil. That's uh, freezing. <laughs> You're going for a jog for an hour, do you? Well, that's certainly definitely it. <laughs> it seems impossible, but a couple of the stronger lads successfully make us across. The pressure is now really on for Lewis. His hands are still hurting him badly. That's it. Get him on him. Come on, Lewis. Come on, come on. That's sick. That's it. You got the momentum You've got now. The sauce now. No, I'm going to drop. I'm not come dropping come in that come water. On, come on, come on. That's it. Come That's on. it. The metal That's rings it. are absolutely freezing and painful to grip. You got it. Nice one, But his determination I'm carries him quick. through. Come on. Yay! Well done, Lewis. My hands were cold. I just didn't want to drop in the water. I'm so glad I didn't drop. It was hard to. So far, no girls have made it, but Emily's making it look easy. Yay! Well, I'm just glad I didn't fall in. Where's the warm shower? It's been quite an icebreaker, but has anyone already caught the eye of leaders Ben and Emma? Really, really impressed with little Emily, actually. I thought Emily did so, so well. She's, She's the only literally girl, a mini, the only a mini, get across. Yeah, and she was did fantastic. So well. Actually, I have to say, Lewis, because he had problems at the start, then suddenly oh, got the momentum halfway yeah. through, and that took quite a lot of strength. The pressure on the finalists is intense. They all know only half will go to the Arctic. I just want it so, I, so much, I can't really put it into words, and I think everyone wants it just as much as I do. To get to the Arctic would mean everything, because I, I can't stop thinking about it every day when I get up. It's the Arctic. I know that there's such strong, good characters in this group. The chances of me getting there is so slim. <laughs> I'm going to go for this one. Really going to push myself to the limit. The expedition to the Canadian Arctic will be unbelievably tough. The adventurers will be living in temperatures as low as minus 50 as they head for a remote glacier. Their main task, to measure it to check on global warming. 
The team needs determined characters who can overcome conditions way beyond their normal experience. So, back in Scotland, it's time for a true leap of faith. Climbing a pole 12 metres high, around 40 feet, with a heart-stopping jump at the top. This exercise is designed to push you through what you would regard as your sort of comfort zone, all right? So it's all about challenging yourself, it's mind over matter, it's all about determination and the will to succeed, all right? For those with a fear of heights, there's going to be some serious soul-searching. Matt, for one, will be testing his nerve to the limit. I'm a bit scared of these pole ones. So I see people going, I was like shaking. It's like, it's like, I think that's what's going like, to scare me most, the shaking of it. The foothold's in the same place all the way up. You just need to build up a rhythm. Nice and steady, nice and steady. Just take, just take time. He's frozen with fear. Matt, just concentrate on the platform above you. Don't look down. But forces himself to go on. I'm so scared, I really am. <laughs> concentrate on what you've been doing. You've been doing absolutely brilliantly. <laughs> It's even tougher at the top. He now has to stand up on the wobbling platform. Go for it! That's it! Yeah. Matt, believe, believe. I'm wobbling, oh my god. Don't don't worry about what's going on down here. Right. Just be scrapped to stand. That's it! That's it! it. That's so That's it. Yes. Just take yeah. what a man! Doing, I'm all right. That is fantastic. It's just wobbling so much. I'm shaking so much. The Arctic is calling, but can he make the leap? <laughs> can I have a countdown, please? Yes! yes. Five, five, four, three, two, one! Yeah. Oh, my God, I just... Can I get down now? <laughs> He's conquered one of his greatest fears. I've never fought in a million years I'll be doing that. It's hideous. It's, it's a, a hideous experience, right. isn't it? At least there shouldn't be any of those in the Arctic anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... And Matt's not the only one with trouble at the top. Courtney has raced up the pole, but at the last minute, her confidence has deserted her. Any time now. Focus, focus on that, please. That's cool. Don't worry. And I'm safe. I'm safe, aren't I? Yeah, you're safe. <laughs> They're all harnessed securely, but it still takes great courage to make the leap. Oh, it's now or never, isn't it? It is. Come on, Courtney. Oh. Three, two... No, 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 don't count! Don't count! Oh, God. Here we go. Oh! oh. Yeah! <laughs> my legs were totally like jelly. Couldn't stop shivering. And then my head was like, you shouldn't really be jumping off a pole, should you? Not a good idea. I was like, go on. Harley is by far the smallest of the finalists. He's utterly determined to beat this challenge in his Arctic quest. That's it, go on, squeeze your legs, squeeze your legs, squeeze your legs. Up you go, up you go, up you go. That's it, perfect. Look up. Excellent, excellent. Let go of the rope, Harley. Harley. I can see now I'm not going to make that trapeze. Yeah, you are, Harley. You've got to... Harley. Harley, you've got to believe. But his nerves are seriously getting the better of him. Oh, and spend those legs and make that jump. Right, I'm going to do it. Hold on. Three, two, one. No, I can't. I can't do it. Holly, 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 you can. Believe, you can, you can make it. I know I'm not going to reach it. I know it's tough, but we've got to make a decision. All right, are we going to go for the jump or are we going to just come, I'll come do down? It. Sorry? I'll do it. Right, OK, let's do it. No, I can't do it. I want to come down. Despite his brave attempts, the only option is to lower Harley safely to the ground. <laughs> you haven't let yourself down at all. You should be proud of what you achieved. Look, just look up there, all right? We've got all the way up. Over the edge, you stood on the top, yeah? And that is an amazing achievement. Others find their courage in whatever way they can. Just find your veil of wind and fly freely to your destiny. Yeah! How does it feel? 
Pet squirrel. Yeah! You don't look easy, it just looks capable. Durable, Jenny. Durable, that's the one. <laughs> yeah! Oh. Jen, do you want a countdown or are you going to go in your own time? Yeah, the countdown. Make it quick though, because I don't think I can stand it in the Three, two, one, and go! Yeah! 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 I was, I was flabbergasted, to be honest. I thought we'd have had at least maybe 30, 40% that wouldn't have actually got up to the top. So I think overall, the group is absolutely astonishing. On the Arctic expedition, the team will have to travel more than 100 miles by dog sled across frozen lakes and mountains. They'll have to learn to drive the sleds and look after the huskies, strong working dogs who need a firm hand to control them. So, back in Scotland, it's time to let the dogs out. The first task is to harness the 12 dogs up to their sled. Some find it easier than others to cope with the strength of the animals. The course is over two miles of rugged terrain in a special high-speed cart, and the power of the husky surprises everyone. so fast, it's like all the bumps and everything, it's just like, this adds to the exhilaration, they're just like, whoa, how fast are these dogs go? Oh! <laughs> the guy like speaks like another language to him and he's telling us it took like six years to train him. Yep. Hang on, boss! Go on, home. Hang on! Ho, ho, ho! He's going gee, gee, he's like, what? And it turns <laughs> right, it's really funny. I didn't think it was going to be that bumpy. Oh, dude, this is close! So we're going down there, and my legs are going everywhere. It's so cool. It was like... We're <laughs> going so fast. Straight, especially soon, as soon as we started, wasn't it? I was jumping all over. I felt like I was going to fall out. Just <laughs> all, the way, all the way along. <laughs> Oh, that dude's a guy. That dog would be very tired. Oh, oh, oh! Woo! I thought Surprise. I was going to come out. <laughs> she was like, hold on, hold on. And I was like, oh, no, I'm going to come out. So I was getting really tight. And then we came down the hill, and I just felt my bum was like a metre off the seat and then crashed back down. In the Arctic, the team will have to prepare food for the dogs every day. One of their favourite meals, raw seal meat. So some of the finalists may not have the stomach for the judges' next challenge back in Scotland. Our next task is preparing our dinner tonight. The catch is the main course is pheasant and the birds don't come pre-packaged. Do we have to skin them? We're going to pluck them and then gut them. Oh, got them. You all right? <laughs> Matt is not enjoying the experience. When eating meat, you don't think about what you have to do, and now I've seen it. I mean, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I'd do it again. Basically, it's dead, so you can't can't hurt it anymore, <laughs> can you? And put its body to good use and eat it, really. Oh. It's quite brutal, actually, but it's a new experience. <laughs> so once you look plucked it, what do you think happens next? You have to cut it open and take out all its and organs. Ah! <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> it was actually like it was really graceful. It was really cool because you could see everything and like you saw its heart and its like um, intestines. You had to pull it out. Oh, I don't like it. Well, it might great. come alive, mightn't oh, it? Yeah, this one's no, Isn't it alive? It feels warm. No, it's dead. Very dead. For animal lover Lily, who's also a vegetarian, this task is going to be particularly difficult. I don't like doing this, but I'm gonna do it. Come on, Lily. It's dead anyway. Just, just, oh, I just pulled the flesh off. Oh, this is disgusting. Wall of seeds. Look at it. Stupid bird. You are going to do it. <laughs> She's so determined to get to the Arctic, she forces herself to get on with the job. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to yeah. eat it as well. Yeah? <laughs> Doing that was, like, so horrible. I was going to... I wanted... I had to do it, though, because I had to face it. As the afternoon wears on, the challenges come thick and fast, but are the leaders any closer to choosing the final eight? It's going, to be, it's going to be hard. Because there's 16 uh, no. really fantastic characters. 
masses and masses of enthusiasm, desperate to impress and desperate to show what they can do. The judges, you don't know what they're looking for, so I just keep doing my best to be myself and just give it on my own, really. You can pull each other. Oh, you can God. pun each other. Even though it's like a um, 50 50 chance and so, if I make the most of being here, because it is, it's a great achievement in itself. Go the right, Jen. This is just like a once in a lifetime chance. It'd just be so important to me if I got through. Living in the Arctic will be extremely harsh, with the weather severe and unpredictable. The team will be camping in temperatures way colder than a freezer, when even the simplest tasks become a major challenge. So to end the audition weekend, the finalists face their biggest test, a night sleeping out in the Scottish Highlands. Any ideas where we might be camping? Up that mountain. Up that I bet it is. Oh, I bet it's up that mountain. Can we get the train? Oh, oh, this is a race against each other, but you can see the sun is already setting. So this is a race against darkness. OK, so I'm not joking when I say we actually need to get up there quite quickly. You need to work as a team. Any problems, you help each other out. Three, two, one, go! Go on then, guys, let's do it! Wait, 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 wait. The temperature has already dropped to minus five and a steep one-mile hike lies ahead. Just watch your path. It's treacherous underfoot. The snow is deep and scattered with rocks. I'm going there. All right. There we are, we've right, one over. Some, like Fabian, are starting to struggle. Uh, my right leg's actually so playing up at the moment, so... Your rest is not there. Oh, I'm a bit tired, but... Oh, oh. I keep pushing up. You're really good. Can you take the clock? Come on, lads. Oh, let's go. Sorry. You OK, Fabian? Yeah. Right. While Fabian soldiers on, others are finding the going even tougher. Come on, Sonny. Come on, you can't sit down, yeah? You've got to keep going. Come on. I'm really out of breath and tired. I'm letting myself down and up on us. <laughs> up ahead, there's a problem for the boys' team, too. Harley's having serious trouble breathing. Breathe in here. Not here, down here. It's really hard to pick up breathe. It's too hard. I think we'd rather stop than tight, push himself and end up hurting himself. It's, like, yeah. it's just not worth it. Harley, mate, take your bag off. Matt and the team rally round so Harley can carry on. So let's get your yeah. bag off. Hey, yeah. just load my bag up with stuff, cos you're no. already carrying the tent. I haven't got no. anything extra. We'll just no, it's fine, it's fine. Just chuck it in mine, sorry. Right. Everyone's exhausted and they're rapidly running out of light. Can you see how much light there is left? Yeah? we still got to get there and put the tents up, so come on. Let's get going, yeah? No, keep the knees going, Harley, keep them up. Come on, everybody. Come on, final push! Just as darkness falls, they all make it to the campsite. We won! Yes! I could feel it on my legs and I was just trying to keep going, but once I got up there, I could look back and it felt really good. Amazing. Proud. Yeah. Here we are. We had a few troubles on the way. Yeah. I really enjoyed it, though. It's really good coming up here because we get a really good view to look back at it. That's really, really good. <laughs> but after such a hard day, Harley's not feeling so positive. I don't know if I want to go to the Arctic. Come on. Don't make that decision, yeah? It's too close. You are an You're doing amazing, Harley. You can be so proud of yourself. You are. Yeah? So come on, it's not over. Okay. Don't talk like that, Harley. Don't talk. Come on. Come on, yeah? Let's, let's get this tent up and let's go to sleep. Right. As crunch time approaches, the judges are focusing on how well different team members are working together. And Courtney is fantastic. She's organising a whole tent. Alex is fantastic. She took extra sleeping bags from Sunny. She led the team up as well for a bit. And they were all helping each other, which is really nice to see. At the moment, I would have a clearer picture on the girls for a final decision than I would the boys. Um, so, yeah, all to play for, right the, right the way down to the wire. In the tents, there's only one thing on their minds, tomorrow's big decision. If we don't get in, it's going to be so terrible. So I don't even want to talk about it. If I get in, then my friends won't. And if my friends get in, I like some exactly. of my friends, I won't. So this either way, you're going to be upset. They're very, 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 very nervous. I think that the sooner I can go to sleep, the better, like, the sooner tomorrow. I don't want to go to bed. So, like, sleep, sleep, sleep and dream. <laughs> As a new day dawns, it's an early wake-up call for the serious Arctic decision-makers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fantastic yeah. character, fantastic character, really bubbly, outgoing. Today is it. This is the final crunch. He, for me, has been a complete star. He's always quirky, he's always up. You know, coped with everything all weekend. Yeah. Uh, extremely well. If I don't get picked, 
I'll, I will be sad, but I try my best. Can she actually cope with the physical conditions? If I'm not what they're looking for, then I'm not what they're looking for. Eight of us are going to go, you know, that's half, and it's quite a lot. Mentally, I think, I don't think he necessarily has it. She really became a leader and led them up the hill, which really impressed me. Everyone here is so lovely, we just don't know who's going to get in at all, and I'm, I'm so nervous about it. It's, it's really scary, actually. Don't move anywhere, all right? The 16 Arctic hopefuls are all gathered together for the final time to learn their fate. Uh, we're now going to split you down into two groups, oh. all right? Andy, Eagle, Lily, Eagle, Emily, Osprey, Adam, Osprey, Jenilyn, Osprey, Stuart, Eagle. All the Eagles make your way into the building there, all right? Oh. All the Ospreys, yeah, make your way to the building there, OK? Oh. Emotions are running at an all-time high. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I'm still going to like you. Guys, you've been really fantastic, but I'm sorry you're not going to be able to. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> Among those not selected are Lily and Harley. Yeah. The tension in the next room is almost unbearable. Right, guys, um, it's been a really, really cool weekend. You've endured an awful lot of cold and tribulations. Well, I'm sorry to say that um, you're going to be suffering an awful lot more about that. <laughs> Conquered his fears and been a brilliant team player. Absolutely everything. It's like all my dreams wrapped in the one. Jenilyn has shown character and a real passion for the Arctic. And I can't believe I'm going. I'm so willing to go. Lewis has proved he's got true drive and determination. Emotions just were pumping around me. Tears started coming. I'm so happy. And completing the team, Courtney. It's incredible. It's an absolute dream. I can't believe it. Fabian. I'm not sure if I wanted to laugh or cry. Alex. Louis, I'm so excited. Adam. I'm so happy that I'm through. <laughs> oh, my God. And Emily. I just started crying. I can't believe it. I am the happiest person alive. Bye. Thank you. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> Even I'm going to start crying. Bye-bye, Bye. -bye, It's freezing cold. After a while, it started to burn your face, and you're like, oh, I didn't think it would be anything like this. It freezes on the inside of your nose, and it feels like you've got concrete up your nose. You're like... This is going to be our home, uh, large, super duper tent, and from here we're going to get you into the Arctic way of life. We'll have girls down this side, boys down this side. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Cool. I can't let it. Can my bike? It's like rock hard though. Can you bite it, Jan? I got it. Nice. We need to be careful where we obviously go to the toilet because we are going to be using the snow to melt for our water. 
You don't want to melt snow that we've been to the toilet oh. on. Oh. So we have a, a girl's pee area and a boy's pee area and then a proper toilet. So I shall show you those first. I'm not sure if it's a P for P or a B for Ben. Well, it was meant to be a P, but it got a bit blobby. I couldn't control myself, so it's a P. Oh. P marks the spot for the boys, all right? This is the toilet. Wait. It's a bucket with a bin bag in it. Oh. That's going to stink. No, it won't stink because it all freezes. Oh, yeah. See, it's clever. Good but it. any liquid freezes as well. So you don't want any pee in here. So you go and pee in the pee spot and come and poo here. <laughs> yes? Hey, if you need a pee and poo. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. You have to pee first. Pee first, then poo. That's what I was All right. Saying. Yeah? Oh, that's and... going to be a hard one. <laughs> I'm not really very happy about it. <laughs> but what can you do? So I'm just not looking forward to when I need the toilet. We're now in the Arctic and it's a very serious environment because if you get things wrong, you're going to suffer the consequences. <laughs> Where's that gooey one? Right, OK. There's the next stage, all right? For a... For a, a <laughs> They are recoverable. They're not sort of, you're not going to have to have your toes amputated. So we could get that. If we get things wrong. If you get things wrong, yeah. <laughs> Looks pretty vicious to me. OK. If you want to go to oh. ultra extremes. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, that would take so like a horror film, <laughs> like, doesn't it? That is to shock you because. That could <coughs> happen Can if you get well. things wrong. So they're going to amputate those ones? In that oh, case, no. yes. That's awful. That really scared me about it, it. Just the reality of what could happen to us out there. I didn't actually realise it was so easy to get bad frostbite and how uh, easy it is. You just have to make a little mistake and then you can, you can lose a finger from it. <laughs> Snuggle right down the side. Right down. Warming up yet? Yeah. Yes. Very warm. Right, have you got all the water that's <gasps> left in your hands? Yep. Looking good. Right. Oh, it's a little insulated, warm for longer. Yeah. Got my wash bag, all my bottles of water and things stuffed in my sleeping bag. Oh my god, it's so claustrophobic. It is quite claustrophobic. <laughs> Good night, guys. Sleep well. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till two body, a body pair. Right, Adam, let's just volunteer you. Yeah. We're scraping off all the ice off the top of the tent, so when we start cooking, it doesn't melt and drip on all our stuff. We're going to pour the water out and try and heat that up, but now you've got a big block of ice. We're going to have to waste some hot water to get rid of your ice. Yeah, so next time, keep them back. Grab a hold of your bag. Both bags and then stop having the chicken down. Okay, you've got down. Yeah, and get your hot drink. I couldn't stand up right, and it all looked white and. You've got mine if you don't. Green, I think. Green. Okay, I think he's up there. I'll go make you some breakfast, yeah? that's where the maximum heat is. All we're going to talk about now, which is a biggie out here, is, is clothing and equipment.
quite cold, the person who's having their tummy put on. What I'm going to do now is put you into your buddy pairs. Yeah. yeah. I've got to put my hands on them. Right, OK, who's got cold hands? Yeah. What you want to do is warm your hands up. You want to put your hand in their armpits. Oh. Oh. Tummy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Go. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I did it right there. I put my hand there. They're beautiful. They're just, it's just amazing. They're really sweet and they're dead friendly as well. Well, they're really sweet, but they're, they're so strong, they just like almost push you over. They're very heavy too. Be really conscious. Anytime you're in front of that sled, you're in a danger zone. You don't want to get caught in the ropes and tripped or hit by the sled. I'm a bit nervous actually because it doesn't seem like I could stay on very easily, so I'm a bit scared in case I fall off. Get off and start running, like to help the dogs out. You don't realize how fast you're going, <laughs> and then you're trying to keep up and everything. And then when you've got to jump back on, I'm really scared so I don't miss the side or anything. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> it's really, really good, it's exciting as well. <laughs> on the back of that, it was just absolutely spectacular. I loved working with the dogs, I, lo I loved like how they control the sleds and driving it, and I can't wait till we have to do it for a couple of weeks in the main expedition. That's going to be so good. The coffee now. <laughs> oh, Yellow snow, is it? No, no, no. no. <laughs> it hasn't got dog pee in it. It's a bit long winded, but if we took water out it, in like bottles, it would just freeze. You either want your food or you don't, or you want a drink or you don't, so it has to be done, doesn't it? So it's starting to melt at the bottom. It is a little bit. It's going to take hours. If I was in school with it, I probably wouldn't be friends with her, to be honest. I hope I don't annoy people because sometimes I say the wrong things and people take me the wrong way. And like, I know that I can get overexcited sometimes. <laughs> she was being a bit girly when we had to do the thing. We had to put your hands in her armpit. She was being a bit, you know, oh no, no, so I'm too ticklish, I'm too ticklish. Which was again slightly annoying, but what can you do? Happy birthday, dear Make a wish. Yay. Yay. And I have for you something from your mum. Oh. 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 I didn't really enjoy this day as much as I expected. I just been like really weepy and like unable to speak to other people. I've just been my mum my and dad and my brother. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's only the second day. It's like we've been here for like weeks. <laughs> It's because they're thinking about you. <laughs> Stay with it. And it's the white. Okay. We're both trying to run up the hill to try and catch onto the thing because I thought they were going to keep on running. Okay, okay. I was worried that they were, were they're just going to zoom off and then we'll be like left just meeting Courtney, like screaming our heads off. Get on! Come back, quick! Oh, oh. Oh, Sage, come on! Quick, run! 
and I didn't know what was going on, I didn't know what had hit me. And all the time we were just panicking and worrying because we had to catch up the sled. Quick, where are you going to? It was just like, how am I going to get back up? And I got really, really tired and started panting. Come on, Pose, quickly run! And the dogs almost went off without us. Well, as we was coming down the hill, um, our sled drove took the dogs, and then they, they was all getting tangled behind the sleigh, and then they was just basically getting dragged straight behind us. I feel quite bad for the dogs actually, because it looked like they were getting hurt a bit. But they're all fine, so it's good. It was absolutely brilliant. It's just an amazing experience. It's like, I can't believe what I'm doing this at the moment. It's really, 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 really good. <laughs> Uh, well, like, Seriously, if you really do need it, I will. Well, my toes are completely numb, and um, when I move them, they just sting like hell. Move, all the other toes moves. Adam, 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 <laughs> Guys, name's China. It's ten past seven. Yeah. Last night it took us three and a half hours to make supper and hot drinks. We haven't got any water. We have to melt snow. So we really need to get a bit of a move on, yeah? So we need to clear the floor of all the rubbish. There's lots of rubbish and a bit of scuffle there. Right, okay. I'm completely in the cold and I wish I had to go outside and I can't feel my feet in. I'm freezing and like, I'm not complaining and I'm just sat on the fire and not swinging. You probably wouldn't have to make them, they should do it without having to be made. Me and Alex got really annoyed because nobody came to help us. They sat so tightly around the fire that no heat could come out and me and Alex were stood on like ice basically and we just were there for about two and a half hours. Emily went into tears because nobody was helping her. But yesterday me and Fabian cooked and cleaned and nobody helped us. They'd had a really hard day and they all just wanted to flump and do nothing. And so you know, there was a lot of kind of a lot of tension last night and a lot of very tired people. Have you got a hot water bottle? Right, I think it's time that you go to bed. Because everyone's just way too tired. Right, a bit of a surprise for you today. Uh, we've been building up and building up experience. We're going out for a night out. Oh, into no! Proper, proper it's too cold. Right. No! And we're going to be without dogs today. We're going to be on foot and we're going to be towing our kit with oh, sleds. That's, that's good. All right. Okay. I reckon I'm going to find it really hard because my feet get cold really quick. I want to know what it's like because I, I just haven't got an idea at all. So that hopefully we might be a bit more used to it for the actual expedition. I'm kind of quite worried about going out later because it's just so incredibly cold. They're going to find it difficult today, definitely, because it's minus 20 at the moment with another 30 knots of breeze, which means it's about minus 40, minus 42. It's going to be a bit of a wake-up call, I think, and certainly tonight it's going to be uh, fun and games. Just make sure your waist belts and your day sacks are done up, guys. Done. Happy? Yeah. Right, let's do it. Let's have yes, 100%. Let's I'm yeah. beginning to sweat. I'm getting really quite hot. OK, hold up. We'll just... Uh, we'll be stopping here now for the others to catch up, all right? All right, then. I think that I put a bit too much head layer on. Well, if you sweat, it gets you all wet. And then when you get wet, it all freezes. 
so then I'll get really cold quickly. Your gloves are out in the snow. Gentlemen, all your gloves are out in the snow, all right? You need to get at least one layer on, yeah, and you need to dust all those off. Now, before you put them on, get all the snow off, because otherwise it's going to melt and they're going to be soaking wet, OK? I'm finding it quite hard actually pulling the sledge, but I'm really enjoying it as well because it's lo it's lovely looking around when you're walking. It's like, really unbelievable. It's quite fun actually, surprisingly, because I thought it'd be real hard work and it would get really freezing cold, but um, you actually warm up really quickly. This is going to be our overnight spot, all right? Right. What do you reckon? A bit windy? Yeah. <laughs> right, we want to get our camp set up as soon as possible, otherwise we're going to get cold. You want the door? It's really hard to keep the tent steady because of the wind power and it's getting cold now. The wind, it's awful. Every time we try to hold it down, it nearly blows away. Keep still, I found it. I'm really annoyed, always oh, being cold. It's, it slows things down and I just want to get everything done so we can have some food. I'm concerned about Adam a little bit just because when it gets cold, he goes in himself. He's not naturally a person who volunteers to do stuff and out here you actually want to volunteer to do stuff because it keeps you warm. The only way to get your hands warm is to help and move around, yeah? It's a bit of a nightmare, really. We've put our tent in the wrong position, so now we're having, having to pull up all the pegs, which is really hard, and we're going to have to move it, then re-peg it down. So, yeah, it's a bit of a problem, really. Yeah? The ice chunk is fantastic. Now holding the tent together. He's doing a great job. Are you sweating? Quite a lot. Then you shouldn't be, should you? Yeah? Then yeah, ease yeah. it down a bit, because you're going to be in trouble later. Yeah? Then you are covered in frost, because you've been sweating so much. That right. means that, well, no, you're fine now. But it means that when you when stop, I cool down. Yeah, you yeah, cool down, you're going to cool down faster than anyone. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally freezing. <sighs> Hi. This stings. That stings. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, 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 that really hurts. I'm really cold, but I can't stop shivering, I don't know. Today. <sighs> it's day four. I have just been for my first poop. Oh my god. So good. The best poop I've ever had. My hands are just a bit cold now. I just want to go to bed and get warm. I'm really tired and I just can't wait to get back into my sleeping bag and be warm. do have concerns over the fact they don't realise how the little things actually are extremely serious. They've all gone to bed and there's another water bottle just lying in the tent and they haven't quite sussed that, you know, all the bits around their neck gaiters and their ballot palms, they're all wet, that's icy. We'll see how they are in the morning, but certainly I think later on during the expedition, I think, unless they get that right, we're going to have some serious drama. Very cold. <laughs> um, I tried to get like warm, and usually I can when I'm in my sleeping bag and that. But I was just waking up in the middle of the night, and when you wake up, you you realise how just how cold it is, and because uh, it was so cold, I couldn't get back to sleep again. When you breathe out in your sleeping bag, it all freezes everywhere, so it was frozen all down your arms, all over your neck gaiter, and everything in the morning, which is really annoying. I mean, I'm exaggerating. Look. 
<laughs> That's what I've got to wear today. I'm not kidding. I mean, I could chop the ice up with this thing. <laughs> I could scrape it. <laughs> it was horrible. When I went to bed, I thought it would be all right because the sleeping bags would, would warm me up, but my feet were absolutely freezing. And I woke up about eight times in the night, so I didn't get much sleep either. I hated it, really. I know we've got to get ready because we're going to be have to do this every day in the main expedition, but it was real tough and I barely got any sleep. I just hope it gets easier. The Canadian High Arctic, one of the world's last great wildernesses and one of the most hostile places on Earth. For eight young adventurers, one through from 9,000 applicants to come here on an environmental mission to help polar bears. Week one and the team are in serious training. They've just spent their first night camping out in the wild. It was unbelievably cold, with temperatures below minus 40. It was horrible. I woke up about eight times in the night, so I didn't get much sleep either. I hated it, really. Everyone wants to get back to the relative comfort of base camp. You're looking forward now to getting back to our nice big tent. Yeah. yeah. We can dry all our stuff. Excellent. Well, we're not going straight there. We're going to go and practice the navigation we've been learning this week. Oh, okay. We have buried somewhere in the ice oh. a bag of very nice goodies for lunch. Oh, it's oh cookies and sweets. Oh, oh my God, oh. I'm so yeah. Oh, yeah. So the point you need to get to is two, three, six, six, five. When they go on their main expedition, map reading skills will be essential, and Lewis is feeling confident. We know where we're going and we've got the bearing, so I reckon we'll be about an hour till we eat. I'm hoping. But they barely started when they need to stop. Sorry, everyone, one minute. Emily's having trouble with her goggles. I hate this stupid outfit. I just feel really claustrophobic in this. It's like I can hardly even breathe. Well, step for your benefit, all right? It's minus 19 Celsius, but with wind chill, feels like minus 35. Frostbite is a real danger. I'm not risking getting frostbite or something because I'm claustrophobic. Right, let me come on. The team have got to learn fast to cope with these conditions. At the end of this week's training, they'll set off on a 100-mile dog sled journey to a remote glacier, where they'll do vital research into global warming. It's going to be the toughest journey of their lives. Right, watch. So you reckon we should go down there, yeah? Matt yeah. thinks we should go down there. To tell the truth, I think we should. Teamwork go. will be essential, but today Fabian feels like no one's taking any notice of him. Louis! Louis! Shush, Fabian, for one sec, yeah? Sorry. I haven't been kind of putting much input in it now because people are just not listening to my ideas. Yeah, OK, 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 go! Yeah, I don't mind, just follow. After two hard hours of trekking, the terrain starts to get much icier. Right, this is the ice, that's ice. <laughs> and pulling uphill in soft snow makes it even harder. Oh. Hold them, going to be oh, no. so tough getting our slates over this well, bit of snow. No way. When you get into the deep snow, your legs keep sinking, um, and that's a bit annoying. They're running out of energy fast. Getting a bit hungry, I just want to find it now, just find our prize. I'm a single close by, and I just can't wait till I get the food, cos I'm absolutely starving. Everyone keep their eye out, cos we reckon we're really near the place now. Guys, remember it's buried, yeah? Oh, I got it, I got it. Yay! I got it. That. They got it! Hey! hey. Cookies! Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Chocolates! Got yeah. it! Oh, yeah. yeah! 
three hours after setting off their finally eating lunch. <laughs> it was hard, but when you've got cookies in your hand, you don't really care. <laughs> but the exercise has shown a few cracks in the team. Fabian was lazy again today. He finds any excuse to not do something. Apparently I was lazy, but I didn't feel like I was lazy. He kept taking everyone else's ideas and just using them and pretending that he thought of it himself. I think we're about here. I've said that about five minutes ago when yeah, we stopped. Yeah, no. Yeah, you just repeat them. But it's only been like two or three days since I'm 13. People think, oh, he's 13. He has to do loads and loads and loads of stuff. The thing is, I'm still the same person. People have just been expecting way more of me. Next morning, an amazing opportunity comes up. The chance for one of the team to help scientists with a survey of rare whales. Matt is lucky enough to be chosen. I've never seen a whale before and I can't wait if, to spot some. Just take, take part in this project, it's just a, a wonderful feeling. He'll be searching for highly endangered bowhead whales, hunted for hundreds of years till they almost became extinct. Now they're protected and scientists want to find out if numbers are increasing. Matt will be working with biologist Karen Ditz. We'll be following this ice edge all the way down, and you make a note on your uh, booklet, oh, and then you do all of your counting and descriptions yeah. of all of the whales that yeah. you see. Bowhead whales are only found in the Arctic, and spotting so few in such a vast area isn't going to be easy. I can't see any. Oh, you're just going to get a glimpse yeah. sometimes? An hour into the search and they haven't seen a thing. It's always disappointing, but it's not unusual either because they live in such a huge area. Sometimes it's difficult to predict where they are. I am a, a bit disappointed that I haven't seen one yet, so uh, I'll keep looking and hopefully I'll see one before the end. Down on the ice, expedition leader Ben has a challenging training exercise for the rest of the group. We've spent basically a night out on the snow in a tent. We're now going to do it the true traditional way tonight and we're going to stay out in an igloo. But you guys are going to be building your own igloos. The first job is block cutting. <laughs> and they soon find it's very hard work. It's really quite difficult because it seems to get stuck about there. Uh -huh. Look at this. Look at this, guys. That took us roughly about 10 minutes. All right, if we need 20 or 30 of those, we're going to have to start getting our block cutting skills a bit slicker. It's more exciting than a tent because you can put a tent up anywhere, but you can't exactly put an igloo up in your back garden unless you live in the Arctic. So. <laughs> up in the air, Matt's still not spotted any whales. I've just got to keep looking and hope for the best. Time is starting to run out, but Karen's still hopeful. We've uh, had lots of reports that they're at the flow edge of Cumberland Sound fairly frequently. And suddenly, Matt spots something. There's one. It's down there. Oh, this is amazing. sitting there real still and then the water came up this it's cut funnel on the top of it really clear and had white spots you see them there after the disappointing start they're incredibly lucky i've seen three now yeah did you see the white on the chin yeah i've noted those down and they were just amazing to see and they're just massive the surveys proved very worthwhile and very exciting too it was just spectacular to watch them for that split second before they disappear, and I absolutely loved it. Back at the igloo building, some of the girls are having doubts about the night ahead. At first, I was like all up for it until I heard that it could collapse. They told us that they'd be um, putting in a shovel so we could dig our way out. That kind of put me off. So I was like, uh, right, okay, so the whole thing could collapse on us in the night. 
Emma said that it'll be warm and it will be sleeping in a tent and I suppose if there's all the girls are in there then it'll be all right. Building igloos is quite an art. Locking the blocks of snow together so they don't collapse. These blocks are not shaped before you've actually put them in place. You put them in place and then you actually cut the spiral in. You then gradually build up the layers all the way around. Right. Save by the knee, because I was right there. <laughs> How are we doing, team? Right, only another how many to go? No, how many? Like 40. 30. <laughs> With help from local experts, the team complete two small igloos. Hey, hey, hey. Yay! But now it's time to go it alone. Now, this is going to be a big one. It's going to be twice the size, if not bigger, than the one that we've just finished. We've got four hours before it gets dark to finish this one off. Uh, we're not really that sure about how to build it, but I don't really want to be the one responsible if it all goes wrong. Sometimes it's a bit annoying when you're lifting it up and it cracks in the middle and you just don't get a break. The wind starts to get up, lowering the temperature once more to around minus 40. It's not touching enough. The extreme cold adds to the stress. It's not it's the cold, cold. that is it. Come, calm, calm down. Let's try and just reshape it. That's sturdy. No, it isn't. That is. That's... No. No, it's not. Oh, it's so annoying. Um, we're always getting the angle wrong, and so, um, all the blocks keep falling in. This one's dodgy. Just the one we're putting on is wonky. We're actually sleeping in it tonight, which is a bit scary because all the sides keep looking like they're going to cave in. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. They're struggling. They had a lot of help before, and it is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle trying to get the, the different blocks to, to interlink. This one's unstable. That's where it's all gone wrong, from there. Oh. You've got joint joint. Joint, 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 yeah. Should be overlapping, so it locks onto the next block. So it needs to re dirt from there onwards. Oh, no. okay. Too cold. We've had to go back and um, redo it all. So that is kind of a bit depressing to think that we're, yeah, that. we're just basically doing what we've done block. before. Well, we have three hours left until the sun goes down, and when the sun goes down, you, you can't do anything. I just want it up, really, so we can get dinner started and get to bed. But while some are working hard, not everyone's Adam. pulling their weight. Adam, Adam, what are you doing? Stand around watching it, it's not going to fall off on its own. I'm not actually doing much good out here because um, I don't think I'm helping because I'm quite cold. And the bitter weather's getting to others too. It seems like it's us four, you know. Where the hell is the world? Where's Jen, Adam, Fabian? Half the team have gone to their tent to shelter from the strong wind. Emily and Courtney aren't impressed. I told them, Mom, we need some help. What do you? Oh, really? Oh, really? I, didn't realize they had I, I thought you could build an igloo on your own. We've been out on the land all day, so it's absolutely freezing, and it's not as if we can just like sit down now and like warm ourselves up. I don't think they realise that this is kind of getting a bit serious. It's getting a bit late. We're all cold. And, you know, we need to sleep in this. Well, it's, nice. you know, it's hard enough to build an igloo, nice. but, you know, four teenagers yeah. building igloos, you know. Just to have that a little bit harder. Ben calls the group together. OK, how do we reckon it's going, guys? Rubbish. Why? No, it's going quite good. It's taken us about two hours, to, and we haven't even made, like, two layers. Yeah. Why don't we break it down and basically have three people, actually, on the igloo itself, yeah. and the rest can go and warm up. This is very serious. This has got to get done by last light, all right? We've got two hours to nail this, and at the moment, it ain't going to happen. Not much. <laughs> they start to work in shifts, but Fabian's unhappy, feeling the group aren't being fair to him. He confides in his teammate, Emily. Aww. It's just the way that I'm being treated. I'm not being listened to. I'm not having my views heard. I'm trying, and then I just get put down. That's it. Just say, if you were, you're all my friends and you should be helping me and say I'm having a hard time at the moment. And it's not just Fabian who's down in the dumps. The igloo building still isn't going well. It's not getting there at all. Oh. Look at it. 
It's fine. But it's not a real look at it. It's rubbish. No, you just need to redo those two there. It's just taking ages and we just keep going and going. There's just problems along the way. It's just slowing us down and down and down. It's like taking forever. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, stupid. An hour to sunset, there's depressing news for the team. Ben decides the weather's become too cold to keep going safely and work has to be abandoned. I'm sat out here in a half-made igloo. Note half-made. Spent about four hours trying to build a um, igloo. Failed miserably, so, you know, kind of a whole day wasted. It just feels like we've all worked our butts off for nothing. For some, like Alex, it's all getting too much. It's so difficult, you don't understand. We slaved away for nearly five hours today to make, like, half an igloo, and we've not had any tea. We're so fed up. I'm just hating this so bad. So bad. This is tough. This is really, really tough. I just can't stop thinking about mum and dad and how much I miss them, and I'm finding it really, really difficult. With morale at an all-time low, leaders Ben and Emma arrange for a very special delivery from the local town. We have supper for you. Yes. What do we have? You all right, guys? Pizza and... <laughs> Oh, that was the best pizza. I don't think I'll ever, ever appreciate that as much as I did then. And it wasn't even great pizza, it just tasted like heaven. Spirits are further lifted by some extraordinary local entertainment, throat singing. It's an ancient Inuit tradition where the throats used to make sounds. The Inuit singers were just brilliant. I loved them. They imitate the sounds around them, like the natural sounds, and they were so excellent, I'm telling you. You can't tell which person's doing the, the high bit or the low bit. You're stunned, you can't say anything, because it's just so good. You know, it, good is good enough. Excellent, it was perfect. <laughs> oh, that was really good. With two small igloos completed, there's room for some of the team to sleep in them if they want. It's a tough decision. I'm going to sleep in an igloo tonight. I'm going to try it out because I know I'm going to so regret it if I didn't, what, didn't do it. Jenny, Lynn and Courtney, I think, want to sleep in an igloo, but me and Alex really don't because we're just too cold. Before bed, Emma gives Fabian a bit of a pep talk. You have been working hard. I've seen you. So they say to you, oh, you haven't been working hard enough. You turn around and you say, no, actually, I've been working really, really hard. And so you need to make sure they know that. And once inside the igloo, the boys admit Fab's taken a lot of stick. Adam even has a confession. I know that I'm really lazy and I just, like, spend most of the time in my tent. I feel a bit victimised because um, um, when I pull my weight, yeah, no one says anything. <laughs> and then I have a break and then I'm the person who's slacking off the person He's not doing anything. I think it's a bit sly on Fabian, because they're all saying, Fabian, you're lazy, blah, blah, blah. I'm sitting off like, ah, it's a life. Hey, Somehow it's Adam always me, misses I getting shouted at. I, I think it's because you're the littlest, yeah, and like, everyone thinks you're really cute. Person ever. After such a hard day, they find the igloo surprisingly cosy. It is a lot warmer than the tent. I'm shivering, saying warmer, which sounds really weird, but with a tent, the wind comes through. I just hope you don't drip on my head. I hope you don't melt. She's worried that it might crash down on her. Aren't you? She's very, very tired. It was probably one of the best nights sleep I've had here so far. I'm a bit tired, but I'll be all right. <laughs> I'm always tired. After a day in the wild, the team are relieved to get back to base camp. Their large sub-zero tent suddenly seems like five-star accommodation. Yes. It's much, much better in here. 
it's nice and warm, but this is like luxury to what we had from out there. Yeah. I know it sounds silly because we've only been here a few days, but it feels it feels like home. That one's there. But they won't be here for much longer. Tomorrow the main expedition begins and they'll be living and working out in the wilderness for two weeks. This morning, leader Emma is taking Lewis and Alex on a flight over the expedition route, more than 100 miles across some of the harshest terrain in the world. Uh, we're going to be working down the, towards the Grinnell Glacier. It's a chance to check out how difficult the journey will be for the dog sleds. Go up a really narrow gully and then head down the valley system and take exactly the route we're going to take with the dogs. Do you think they're OK with the dogs, then? I reckon they'll be all right on the sea ice, but getting up all this land is going to be tough. Yeah. We're going to have to help them a lot and push the sledge quite a lot. Yeah. They'll be far from civilization. If anything goes wrong, everyone will need to know what to do. So back on the ground, Ben has organised a search and rescue for their final training exercise. Got a bit of a, a, a situation on our hands. This is um, Constable Chris Coles from the police detachment in Callowit. I don't know what you guys had planned for this morning, but we need you, we need a bit of help. Um, we've got a call last night that we had a couple of reported missing on a skidoo. We have a search and rescue unit. I've asked Ben if I can borrow you guys and him and the skidoos to cover the sea ice. The team are led to believe it's a real emergency. Just at the head of this chain of islands running down here, so our, our main access to look at is going to be the right-hand side. Yeah. All right, so you want to be looking that way. Okay, over that way. They work as spotters, looking for any sign of the lost snowmobile drivers. Being stranded in such low temperatures would be very dangerous. Fabian signals to the rest of the team to stop as Emily seen something. Where? Do you know what I mean? Just there, there's things like stood up. Where? I found them! We're coming! How's have we got any spare have we got a down jacket? Spare down jacket. We found the two casualties on the skidoo. With the situation yeah. under control, Ben decides it's time to put them in the picture. Fantastic, Emily. Well spotted, all right? This is a training exercise, OK? No way! I told Just to sort of... you, didn't I? The point of this was is that this is how they do it for real, all right? We were genuinely concerned, and um, it made us look out more as well because we, we actually thought that someone's life was at risk. It could happen, so it's best to, it's best to get us trained, so... We know what to do in a real situation. It's been an impressive performance to complete their training. We do search and rescues probably at least once a month. So what you went through is exactly what, what we do. We get people in the area to go out and help us because we have an awful lot of ground to cover. So you guys did a bang-up job. Meanwhile, up in the sky, Emma, Alex and Lewis have reached their breathtaking final destination. So what we're flying over now is the glacier. This is the end point of our whole trip. And what we're going to do is come out here and measure how much the ice has changed. It just looks like it goes on forever. It's enormous. It's 15 kilometres long. So it's a massive distance for us to be covering. The flight has brought home just how testing the expedition will be. It's making me think that it's going to be quite tough getting there in just a week. I'm a little bit nervous. But I'm just really excited, looking forward to what we're doing when we set off tomorrow. It's going to be really challenging, and I don't think anyone is quite prepared for what's up ahead. Do, 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 do.